Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're talking more Hellboy. This is Wake the Devil. Welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I am your host, Brent Casina. Today we are reviewing Wake the Devil. This is volume two of the Hellboy trades from, I don't know, 2003 or something like that. This doesn't have a major motion picture sticker on it the way that my first one, Seed of Destruction, does, but I got them around the same time that first Hellboy movie was coming out. I was catching the Hellboy wave and uh, wanted to read some Hellboy. So this is what this is from. This is currently collected, I believe, in the Hellboy Omnibus Volume 1. It's probably also called Seed of Destruction, but this is basically the second Hell big Hellboy miniseries that came out back in the 1990s. It's This is all Mike Mignola. There's no John Byrne on here like the first one, and this really steps it up and really shows you who Hellboy is. So I said in the Seed of Destruction video that if you weren't feeling it, to keep going because I was I had read this or, or three or four issues out of this six issue run or maybe it's five um, at the time of recording that video and I can definitively say this is the Hellboy that I fell in love with right here in Wake the Devil. So if Sea of Destruction didn't really grab you, come over here, read Wake the Devil. It is like a continuation of the things that were happening in Sea of Destruction. Uh, you deal with the the henchmen of Rasputin. Actually, you find out Rasputin is Rasputin if you didn't know that from the film. Um, and it follows up on, on Abdul Jihad and also actually gives a little bit of like Hellboy's origin per se. Or not his origin, but the prophecy behind him that is meant to have him be the uh, Kickstarter to Ragnarok, to destruction, that kind of thing. So... Um, all that is in here. So there's a lot of lore and a lot, a little bit of story here also. Um, pretty similar to that first trade paperback is that this kind of takes place in one main location. You're just following Hellboy. Uh, here investigating vampires, Girescu or something like that in Romania. There's a team sp are split up quickly in the first issue and you only follow Hellboy and his adventures because everybody else seems to be like a dead end. Until towards the end of the series where they kind of, you know, remember, Mike Mignola remembers these other characters and then pivots to them only for them to come and, you know, kind of find Hellboy and save him or pick him up because he's kind of stranded, right? So that's kind of what, what they do in the, in the world right now. So we're not really building to the BPRD series. Uh, I've highlighted on the channel over here. It's over here probably off camera. But um, we're getting there. We're getting there. But overall, I think this is a really fantastic story. Tying Hellboy's lore into uh, the, you know, the Nazis and Ilsa over here and um, this whole vampire thing and how she was in love with this vampire and how she feels betrayed. And she has a whole like story going on with Rasputin where he's like, you know, follow me, don't follow the vampire, that whole thing. Really, really interesting. Um, the weird part is, is that's most of the book. You don't really meet Girescu until, uh, I think it's like chapter four. And even though you've talked about him the entire miniseries, and you've uh, been in his castle basically the entire miniseries, when he shows up, it's kind of a whole lot of do nothing. And, and I feel like I remember a lot of the Hellboy stories being that way, that the things surrounding... Uh, him getting to whatever he's investigating were more interesting than what he was actually investigating. The adventure getting to where he's supposed to go is more interesting than where he actually ends up. And I feel like that's, you know, a majority of the Hellboy story. So if that might bother you, then maybe you want to stay away. But give this one a try. And if you do like it, like stick with it. The other thing that's really nailed here in, or, or you know, nailed down, hammered in, honed in, whatever expression you want to use, is Hellboy's voice. Hellboy's voice in the John Byrne in the Sea of Destruction, like I said in that video, wasn't really there and it actually comes across here. He's grumpy, he's crusty, he's just like a curmudgeon and he would rather destroy people than talk to them, uh, especially if they're monsters, right? So 
He's very upfront about it. At the same time, he's still personable. When he's interacting with the other members of his team, he's still talking with them. He still seems like he'd be a little bit of fun to be around. Uh, you're, so you're getting that same vibe that Ron Perlman brought to the character in that first film. So I can see where they drew some of that from, even though they expanded on it in a, in a big, big, big way. Um, so Seed of Destruction follows up on the lore. It nails down Hellboy's voice. The arts, again, it's Mignola, so I feel it's phenomenal. It's very shadowy, very blocky, very dark. Like this whole page here, uh, Mignola is basically only drawing what he has to, so if he's leaving out a background, that's on purpose. But there are other times where he will highlight something in the background to show you that little bit of detail as opposed to drawing it in every panel. Uh, what you get out of that is kind of a simplicity and excellence in storytelling. You're really focusing on only on what's going on the panel as opposed to everything that's going on behind. And that makes the Hellboy stories move faster. Uh, it makes them more interesting because you're focused in on the characters and their actions as opposed to you know, Jim Lee's beautiful two-page spreads that are have every little detail in them. There's something to be said about those kinds of artists, but there's also something to be said about artists like Mignola, Darwin Cook, you know, these guys with the more simplistic style that, you know, really just grabs you. And th this is the thing I'm talking about, the detail. Like, you're, uh, you have an Iron Maiden here that um, Ilsa is going into for reasons you will find out in the book, but there's kind of a zooming close-up in her face, and that's kind of the most detailed look you get at the, the face of this Iron Maiden she's stepping into. So every when you see it next time and it's not as detailed, you remember this panel because it is so, um, like, not in your face, but it's such a part of the storytelling, this slow zoom in on it, that any other time you see the Iron Maiden in the book, you're remembering this panel as opposed to uh, looking at whatever Mignola decided to draw to represent that uh, that Iron Maiden, that coffin, right? So that's kind of the tricks that he uses to, you know, to make your brain realize that uh, things are important at certain times and aren't important other times and for you to kind of gloss over it a little bit uh, in order to get the efficiency of a story. Uh, so that's kind of cool, you know. Um, there's other characters that make appearances in here that will come up later on. I think I've read the first eight volumes here, and we're going to go through them, obviously. Um, but Hakate, the witch of them all, kind of shows up in here, as well as Jirescu the vampire. The Baba Yaga makes an appearance with her chicken leg house. All this was stuff that I was not familiar with. And, uh, you know, the Baba Yaga's in Fables also, which we're almost done with. Uh, when I'm recording this video and uh, so it's kind of cool to see them kind of tag team as like a, a legend lore thing that Mignola d dives into like a horror story versus like a children's story uh, that Bill Willingham focuses on this kind of same character concept they're all evil though <laughs> that's the that's the um, the through line here but it's neat to see these other characters introduced also in this miniseries that are going to come into play later on down the line in the Hellboy series. So, um, Wake the Devil, best one yet. I mean, there's only two so far, but I got to say, if you didn't like Seed of Destruction, read this one uh, or finish this storyline, however you're reading it in trade paperback or one of those trade paperback omnibuses or whatever. But this is where you really get the feel of who Hellboy is, what his voice is, who the character is, and that sort of thing. So, uh, this comes with my highest recommendation. I really enjoyed reading this. So let me know what you thought of Hellboy Wake the Devil down below in the comments, and we'll see you guys next time in The Funny Pages.